The sheer sensory assault of a movie can often present audiences from failing to pick up on the wider importance that is basically hidden in plain sight. And this is certainly true in the horror genre, which doesn't always suggest that it's got subtle storytelling to offer, but that is absolutely not true. And that's what we're here to talk about today as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 horror movie moments more important than you first realised. Number 10. The New Australian Flag – Event Horizon now, Paul W. Anderson's Event Horizon is such a dizzying trip of a sci-fi horror movie that nobody could blame you for failing to pick up on one of its more unexpectedly meaningful details. Case in point, you probably didn't notice that the Australian flag on protagonist Dr. Williams' uniform is different from the nation's current flag. The real flag is a blue field with six stars on it and the British Union Jack flag situated in the top left corner. But in Event Horizon, the flag on Dr. Williams' jacket contains a different flag altogether. This is actually the Australian Australian Aboriginal flag and suggest that in the film's first approaching future of 2047 that Australia reckoned with its colonial past by renouncing its status as a British constitutional monarchy. It's a fascinating and weirdly wholesome piece of low-key world-building in an otherwise horrific movie, and one that was apparently suggested by Sam Neill himself, who wished to pay tribute to Australia's original settlers. Considering that there have been increasing calls in recent years to change Australia's flag in reality, it's entirely possible that Event Horizon ends up being totally on the money. Number 9. The Date of Kevin's Last Memory – Split in M. Night Shyamalan's terrific split, you might recall that Kevin Wendell Crumb, played by James McAvoy, tells Casey that the last day that he remembers is September the 18th, 2014, which he believes to be the current date. Now, this may seem like a totally random date at first glance, but it's actually a very specific choice that surreptitiously nods to real-world events relevant to the movie's title. September 18th, 2014 was also the date of the 2014 Scottish independence referendum, where Scotland voted on whether or not to split from the United Kingdom. Given that James McAvoy is himself Scottish, it's entirely possible that he suggested the date to Shyamalan as a reference to his home nation's political situation. With that in mind, it is relatively surprising that not a single one of Kevin's 23 other personalities ended up actually being Scottish. Number 8. The Changing Colour of Pennywise's Eyes – It Audiences en masse were so likely traumatized by the opening sequence of 2017's It that they likely didn't notice a vital character detail hiding in plain sight. You see, during the movie's first scene, poor Georgie is preyed upon by Pennywise the dancing clown who ends up luring the young boy towards a drain and then devouring him. While Pennywise cons Georgie by presenting a fun, appealing demeanor, he has one majorly insidious trick up his sleeve, and that is changing the color of his eyes. As we know from the rest of the movie, Pennywise his natural eye colour is yellow, yet during this scene his eyes are blue whilst talking to Georgie. And the reason for this? Well, Georgie's brother Bill has blue eyes, and so Pennywise changes his eyes to a colour that, on an unconscious level, would help lower Georgie's guard and encourage him to trust Pennywise. This is actually explained in Stephen King's original novel and adds yet another disturbing layer to Pennywise's predatory nature. Number 7. The Opening Mural – Midsummer. Ari Aster's unforgettable horror film Midsummer opens with a fleeting glimpse of a gorgeous yet disturbing painted mural which contains a number of eerie and unsettling sights. While viewers might initially assume that this is simply some garden variety creepy sh** intended to throw them off balance from the movie's opening seconds, it's actually a veiled breakdown of basically the film's entire plot. The most distinctive visuals in the mural include Danny and Christian arguing, the Swedish cult elders jumping off a cliff, the Pied Piper who leads the movie's American tourists to their doom, Mark wearing a jester's outfit, and the presence of five skeletons representing the five outsiders that are killed by the cultists. The mural also offers far more metaphorical imagery for audiences to read into, but it's nevertheless fascinating that Asta included almost all of the movie's major plot beats up front, even if their context wouldn't be made fully clear until the film's end. Number 6. Rose Challenges the Cop – Get Out Jordan Peele's Get Out is one of the most dense and detail-packed horror films of the last decade, a movie that hugely rewards repeated viewings by revealing the many secrets that Peele had hidden in plain sight. And one such scene occurs early on in the movie, where Chris and his girlfriend Rose hit a deer whilst driving and a police officer is then called out to the scene. Despite Rose being the one driving, the cop asks to see Chris's ID, at which point Rose stops Chris from handing over his ID, insisting that he doesn't need to as he wasn't the one behind the wheel. Now, on the surface, it simply seems like Rose is 
is sticking up for her black boyfriend against a suspect at best police officer. But once Rose's true colors are revealed in the film's third act, it's retrospectively clear that her intentions were far from benevolent. With the knowledge that Rose is actually in on her family's deranged scheme to kidnap black people and hijack their bodies, it's evident that Rose wanted to prevent the cop from running Chris's ID and creating an electronic paper trail that would then throw suspicion on her once Chris went missing. Even on a second viewing, this is easily missed, but a seemingly typical, albeit racist, encounter with a cop is far more calculated than it first seems. Number 5. The Rotten Corn – The Witch Robert Eggers delivered a deliciously delirious folk horror film in The Witch, which is certainly a piece that rewards those who pay close attention, though you can be forgiven for failing to appreciate the significance of all of that rotten corn. Now, Early on in the film, New England settler William and his family are shown struggling to grow enough crops to make it through the winter, with their corn appearing to have rotted. Yet this rot is actually ergot, a fungus that grows on the rye and related plants and can cause ergotism in humans who consume it, which is a form of fungal poisoning which can, amongst other things, things induce psychotic visions. As such, this might tangibly explain the film's increasingly surreal events, that the family was simply succumbing to ergotism and none of this was actually real. Now, given that ergot is often suggested as one of the potential causes of mass hysteria during the Salem witch trials, it's certainly a fitting suggestion and one that purposefully is placed in the film by the director. Now, this doesn't mean that the witch's supernatural happenings are 100% hallucinatory, but it does lend fascinating meaning and context to the shots of inedible corn that otherwise seem relatively standard and benign. Number 4. The Crazy Norwegian – The Thing the iconic opening sequence of John Carpenter's sci-fi masterpiece The Thing sees a Norwegian helicopter pilot chasing a sled dog towards the American outpost on Antarctica, where it's greeted by RJ McCready and the rest of the American team. Now, The pilot shouts something in Norwegian before taking aim at the dog, wounding an American by accident and then being killed by another in self-defense. For the audience, it's an intriguing yet confusing opening, with viewers likely left to initially conclude that this man himself has been overcome by the parasitic alien lifeform known as The Thing. Thing. Yet, as anyone who can speak even a little Norwegian will tell you, his dialogue actually translates as, Get the hell away from that thing. That's not a dog. It's some sort of thing. It's imitating a dog. It isn't real. Get away, you idiots. Needless to say, if McCready or any of his men understood what the pilot was saying, it would have been considerably easier for them to deal with this alien entity straight away. Number 3. Yara's Clamshell E-Reader – It Follows now It Follows is such a moody, dread-soaked piece of work that it's easy to forget that the film never really fully commits to an explicit time period. Instead, it exists in this eerily ambiguous point in time. Now There are various touchstones throughout the film that point to different eras. The TVs are always showing 1950s films and shows, while Jay's home has a distinctly 1970s decor. And yet, flying totally counter to all of this is the brief glimpse that we catch of Yara's e-reader device. Yara is reading a book on what resembles a clamshell makeup compact, a piece of technology that seems both extremely modern compared to the dated CRT TVs and corded phones throughout the film, and yet so completely alien to our own present, where smartphones and Kindles are ubiquitous. This very subtly places It Follows in its own distinct and unclear time period, or universe even, which only further enhances the sheer strangeness of filmmaker David Robert Mitchell's twisted vision. Number 2. Karen Wears a Christmas Sweater on Halloween – Halloween 2018 now here's something that you probably never thought about. Did you notice that in the new Halloween movies, Laurie Strode's daughter Karen wears a Christmas sweater? Now given that the film is set on Halloween, it really makes no sense at all for anyone to be wearing a Christmas garb almost an entire two months before the holiday. Even the most eager Christmas fans know that that's totally insane, right? Yet there's actually a more meaningful reason for this. Because Karen grew up as the daughter of Laurie, she shares a disdain for Halloween and so decides to ignore it, instead skipping straight over it to Christmas. Writer director. David Gordon Green even confirmed this himself in interviews. He said, There's that little sign of rebellion. On Halloween, she wears a Christmas sweater so that she doesn't celebrate. And actress Judy Greer, meanwhile, added, That was David's idea, which I loved. We decided that Karen hates Halloween so much that she just skips it and Thanksgiving and in her own head goes right to Christmas. Like, as soon as the tiny little bite-sized candies come out at the drugstores for trick-or-treaters, she pulls out her Christmas sweater and is like, Nope, nope, I celebrate Christmas. I'm just skipping right to Christmas. It's an intriguing character flourish that slightly tells us a lot more about Karen's mindset than the film itself actually fully lets on. And number 1. Hannibal Lecter's Deliberate Blinks – The Silence of the Lambs 
One of the oft-repeated claims about Anthony Hopkins' Oscar-winning performance as Hannibal Lecter in The Silence of the Lambs is that the actor never blinked on screen whilst playing the part, in an attempt to enhance the psychopath's inherently unsettling presence. It's a claim that's even been perpetrated by Hopkins himself in interviews, despite the fact that it's blatantly not true. Even the most casual, cursory examination of Hopkins' 20-ish minutes of screen time throughout the masterful horror thriller will confirm that he does indeed blink, albeit markedly less so than your average person. It's clear from watching Hopkins' scenes that the actor chose his blinks carefully, using them as exclamation marks to punctuate the meaning of whatever's going on. As such, when we see Lecter blink emphatically after dropping the iconic fava beans and a nice Chianti one-liner, he also blinks with a slow deliberation during the quid pro quo scene as Clarice tells the story of her father's murder. It's something you probably didn't consciously pick up on, but your brain likely did. The Lecter blinked only in calculated, periodic ways that seem almost inhuman, and it adds yet another level of creepiness to an already all-timer cinematic skin crawler. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 horror movie moments more important than you realized. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ, but the O is a zero. Or you can follow me over on Instagram, where it's the same handle, RetroJ, but the O is a zero. And I hope to see you over there. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. I want to end this video by reminding you of something very, very important that you may have missed in your day-to-day -day life, and that is just to be kind to yourself and to take a break every now and again, all right? I know that we can be gunning for the finish line all the time at the moment, but it is very, very healthy and definitely encouraged to take a break every once in a while, relax, recover, recharge, and then approach situations with fresh eyes and a fresh mentality. Hopefully doing this will help you achieve the goal of living a healthy and happy life, and that is all I want for you, my friend. Now go out there and smash it after a cup of tea. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon.